Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's design is a little bit more artsy, so I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope you're enjoying my videos so far, and I hope you're having a great day. Let's get started. Hi guys, so I'm back with another design for you. I chose another winter design since it's January. I live here in Minnesota and we still have a lot of snow on the ground, so I wanted to do another winter theme. But um, anyways, if you like this design, stay tuned and I'll show you how I did it. So hey guys, I'm back to do another design. I've freshly filled my acrylic, getting ready to do another snow design. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a, a gradient, but I'm not gonna do it with sponges. I'm gonna do it freehand. I'm gonna use these three pinks and they are the Sally Hansen Miracle Gel. The first one I'm gonna use on top is gonna be the Smart Tees, 239400. The next color is gonna be um, Shockwave 310. And I'm gonna end it with this color, which is Pink Up 200. And then I'm going, and this is the colors, I kinda did it on a napkin here, those are the three colors how they go. I'm gonna do a gradient look, but I'm gonna do it freehand. When I'm done with that, then I'm gonna be using my acrylic paints and this brush, and this is um, number one from Hobby Lobby. And like I've told you guys before, I cut my tip off so that it's a thinner tip. I just hope you can see that. I make mine thinner. I learned that from Robin Moses. Then I'm gonna make, what I'm using the pink, the white for here is I'm gonna make white Christmas trees, uh, like, uh, pine trees, but I'm going to do them white like they're in, you know, all full of snow. And then I'm going to end it putting some glitter through it because whenever you look at snow, it glistens. I'm going to use this Sally Hansen Diamond Strength and it's called Diamonds number 120. So I'm going to get started on that. I'm going to do most of my nails. I'm going to leave um, a few bare so I can do the pinks. I'm going to start with the pinks and then I'll be back, but I'm going to show you guys. I'll leave a few bare to show you how I'm doing that gradient. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, hi guys, I'm back. I just really quick want to show you what my aunt made to, made for me. Isn't this cute? She put Angel's Heavenly Nails. And on the other side, it's just got a little bit of art and stuff on the other side. Because this can be used both ways. And she put a little bit of foam in there. When your polishes are starting to get empty, you set them in here and then they're already tilted for you. When they get even emptier, you turn them that way. And they really work good that way. And I love that. I never have to tilt my polishes. So I absolutely love this thing. But anyways, so here's so far what I got. Um, these colors are so beautiful together, and I and I got a few empty here to show you, but I did start it with a light pink, the lightest one, because you don't want any uh, space in it, like any bleed through. So, But anyways, I'll show you how I did this now. So I'm going to get the camera in here close. So you start with your lightest color, and you don't want a lot of paint on it, and you want to do painting strokes. So just kind of go at an angle like this. You know, just stroking. That's what you want to do, just as if you were painting. But you don't want this to look good. You want it to look rough because it's a gradient look. So you start with that color. Go to the next color. And make sure, like I said, wipe off a lot of your paint. You don't want a lot of paint on this one because you want to do those strokes. Then go over that color, overlap it, and again, do the same thing. Just stroking it like that. Just paint strokes. And um, making it look rough because you want it to. And just going to your corners, if you need to, you can go the other side and go back the other way just to get your corners really good. But again, you're just, you know, no special way of doing this. You just want it to be rough. You do want those paint strokes like I'm doing because you want it to look like a gradient. Like I said, and when you do those sponges, you know that everybody knows whoever does sponging, you know you get that kind of rough look like sandpaper look. Then you go to the next color. So that's kind of what you're trying to achieve here without doing it with, with sponges. That way you don't have to use a barrier or nothing on your nails, but then you're getting that gradient look. Cap off your end here. Make sure you cap that off. And like I said, you're getting that gradient look and achieving it without a sponge, which is kind of cool. And then you don't got to tape anything off. Isn't that beautiful? I'll do another one to show you. Back to the light pink. Again, not using a lot of paint on it and just doing those uh, paint strokes like that just you know making it look rough I hope you can see this because this is the lightest color against the color that is the base color so but I hope you're seeing this and again just go down a little ways you know just a uh, quarter of the ways you want to go down because your next color is going to go right into it so you go to the next color and hang on a sec here then you go into the next color again wiping a lot of your paint away Going into the next and again overlapping that baby pink and just doing a uh, paint stroke again. Again, just 
making it look rough. That's what you want, because this is a gradient. So just keep going like that till you get, you know, how you like it. And then go to your last color. And again, just do your last color. Make sure the paint isn't real thick on there. And again, do the same thing, overlapping that last color that you did. And just, it doesn't have to look neat. This one doesn't need to look neat. This is a gradient. And then the end, you want to cap that end off like that. Isn't that beautiful? And a lot of girls could leave it just like that and top coat it and go, but it wouldn't be me without doing art on it. You guys will learn that when you see photos I'm going to be sending through too that I've done in the past. You'll see photos I always have art on. So, all right. And I just would like to show you, like I always do, like to do the other hand. I bumped this a little bit. That's okay. I can fix that. Um, but I like to show you guys doing the other hand because a lot of people want to see that. I don't know by doing this if it's teaching you how to work with your non-dominant, but it's how I do. So again, now I'm going to go the opposite way with the, the paint strokes and just getting into those corners. And don't worry if it gets on the skin because you can clean up at the end. That's not a big deal. Then you go to the next color. And this is me, like I said, working with my non-dominant hand now. And like I said, just years and years of practice, just doing lots of things. I got good at it, but you know, I didn't know how in the beginning how to do it. You have to just practice. So again, getting into all these little corners so that you're covering up that light pink that you started with. And just stroking again like a paint stroke, making it look rough. And then go to the third color. Again, taking most of the paint off so that you can give it that rough look. And again, just finishing that off overlapping the last color you did and again just roughen it up and then cap your end make sure that looks good I'm just gonna put a little bit more on the end of this because I got a little messed up so yeah so here we are and like I said again you could just top coat this and it would be beautiful just the way it is but I'm gonna uh, keep going and I'm gonna do a design we're gonna do some white pine Christmas trees I'll be right back Okay, so I got my trees going here, my beautiful winter trees with the snow. And um, I got the glitter going in it, and I saved two nails to show you guys how I did this. So first, what I did was, is I wanted it to look more 3D-ish. So what you do then is I mixed a little white with a little bit of black, and I made a gray. So I'm going to start my snow mound off in my trees with gray. So in this, you don't have to go in any, you know, any way. You just kind of just, I'm just going to make it look like a snow mound. And then just fill it in and all the little corners and everything. And remember what I like to do when I do my nails, when I'm doing art, I'd get my polish all on. And then when I'm done, I top coat everything. Because if you make a mistake when you're working with acrylic paints, it's so much easier. Just use a little alcohol and you can clean it off. And then you don't ruin your paint job that you painted. But you can just do your, um, your design then. So now my tree. I'm going to, um, I'll be right back. I'm going to turn the camera on. I'll okay, right I'm back. back. So here's how I'm going to do my tree. I'm going to put my tree, this one's over in the corner here, so I'm going to make this one over here. So I'm just going to start at the tip here and just come out like that. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. Let your brush do the movement. And then just make uh, brush strokes like that because you just want it to look like a pine tree. And just keep coming down till you come all the way down to the, the snow mound. Make the branches come out farther as it comes down. And just have it go right into that snow bank or snow mound, whatever. And you see how I did that? Now I'll do one more for you. Let me fill this a little bit in here. I'll do one more for you. Again, that snow mount, I'll just go this way with this one now. And I'm not doing it any, you know, specific way, the snow, because snow is not perfect when it comes down. Snow is perfect. It's beautiful looking, but the way it comes down is not perfect. So I just paint on my little snow mound here because the tree is going to be out in the forest and it needs its, it needs its sitting in snow. So I just get this on and I paint all the little corners and everything, make sure that's done. Now this tree's over there, so I'm gonna do this tree over here. So again, just use your let your brush do all your work for you. And when you're hand painting things, remember, you don't want it to look perfect, otherwise it looks like a sticker, and then you might as well just put a sticker on. You want it to look like a painting. So you want it to, and I've learned that, you want it to look um, just, you know, like you like you painted it, not like you you know, put it on with the sticker because otherwise then what's the point, right? So less perfect is better. So now I'm going to go over this one. Actually, I'll be right back. I'm going to let those two dry up a little bit because I'm going to put the white in it. Then I'll be right okay, back. I'm back. Now I'm going to do the white. 
I'm going to take pure white acrylic paint and I'm going to go into this now. And again, I'm just going to go over the kind of the same way, just swiping through like this because I want the gray to show too. That's the, the point of it, to make it look 3D-ish. So I'm just kind of just brushing through in areas but leaving the gray open. And then over the snow, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put some snow in here and just kind of brush it. And it's a, the paint's a little wet, so that's great. That's what I wanted. I wanted the paint a little wet where the snow was. So we'll go to the next one here. Again, just using strokes like that with your brush. Let your brush do most of the work and leave your gray showing because you need the gray and the white mixed together. You want it to kind of look like a shadow, like the tree's shadowed. So, and again, guys, I'm not a professional. I'm not a licensed tech, so you don't have to listen to anything I'm saying. But this is just things that I've learned and know. So I just, you know, give my advice on how I do it, but I'm not licensed. So just so you guys know, you guys know that from, if you watch my first video, I am not a licensed tech, but I've learned things over the years on my own doing this. So there you go. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to, if you see these ones, I've got glitter in them just to make the snow glisten a little bit. I'm going to let this dry a little bit. I'll be right back and we're going to put glitter in and then we're going to uh, dry that up and then we're going to top coat everything and we'll be done. Okay, now I'm at the last step, top coating using my sesh feet, running out of this bottle here. I'm going to top coat. Everything else is already top coat. I'm just, I left these to dry a little more. These two that I showed you guys the design on. And always, like I told you before, always wait till your design is completely dry before you top coat anything because you'll mess your design up. And like I said, I top coat before I do my design first, and then I do my design. That way um, I can take off anything off the acrylic paint I've worked with if I make a mistake. I can take them off and fix it and not ruin my paint job that I did. And I also like to have two coats of top coat anyways because the first coat always seeps all the way in. So there you go, isn't that beautiful? There's both hands. Now, I'm just going to finish cleaning up here, and I'll be back just to say goodbye and show you guys the end product of this. Okay, I'm all done. I enjoyed doing this design. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. It's uh, more of kind of like a dreamland because you'd never really go into a forest of trees that would be in pink. But I just thought it would be really pretty and just different. So, But I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you are enjoying my videos, and um, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.